What's up guys, Cliff from The Sunday Drive, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to upgrade to a two-piece drive shaft on your Chevy Silverado, so stay tuned. So welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we are gonna be upgrading the drive shaft on this Silverado right here. Um, and I say it's infamous because these drive shafts are known for breaking apart under high speeds or high horsepower applications um, because they are very thin. They are lightweight, which is nice, but they are very thin and they tend to twist um, when exceeding uh, 95 miles an hour or so. Um, so a lot of times if you take your truck to the dyno, they actually won't let you dyno if you have your stock drive shaft. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that we have a video showing how to upgrade this drive shaft to a much sturdier single piece drive shaft, which is a much thicker sidewall. But in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to upgrade to the two piece drive shaft on this four x four vehicle. Now, this guide will be applicable to the two wheel drive, but there are some differences. And today we're gonna to show you what those are and get this upgraded so you don't have to worry about it falling apart on you. So we're upgrading to this two piece drive shaft from Performance Driveline, same company that manufactured the single piece drive shaft in my truck that has been holding up very well. Um, the difference with this is obviously it allows the truck to be lowered while still having clearance, which is a nice benefit. Um, and one of the reasons people often upgrade their drive shafts besides uh, being able to handle more horsepower and be able to go higher speeds is that Chevys are known for a shaking issue, um, which people believe is due to the very long, thin-walled uh, drive shaft having resonance frequencies at certain RPMs or not being balanced perfectly. I will say since upgrading to the thicker wall drive shaft on my truck, it does seem to happen less where I've experienced those Chevy shakes, but it does still happen occasionally. Um, so we're gonna find out if with this two-piece drive shaft, if it helps that issue at all. Now this is a customer vehicle, so we're not gonna be able to test it extensively for you guys. But as the customer comes back in for other work, if he has any feedback, we'll definitely be sure to give you guys an update. Now it is important to note that in their literature, they don't guarantee this is going to eliminate any shakes and they say the main purpose of this is for lowered vehicles. So we'll be curious to see how this does over time, but it definitely is much heavier duty than the stock drive shaft. This got very heavy holding it for those intro clips while Pete was capturing some cover photos. Um, so each of these pieces are at least 30 pounds. So this is not a weight savings application, but if you have a truck, you're probably not worried about weight savings. You just want something that is going to last the lifetime of the truck and hold up well. And I think this kit is gonna do it for you. Now, if you wanna purchase this, you will not find a link for this in our description, although we do ask you to, as always, go to our description for links for parts and tools in the videos. It really does help us out. But they actually don't have this on their website. Um, I had to call uh, and specifically asked for this, and they said, yes, it's available. It's not something we list on the website. Even the instructions say, if you're installing this on a four x four like we are on this truck, you need to give them a call for the specific instructions. Um, or shoot us a message. We'll have our contact information down below and we'll help you get this purchased. It does really help us out, so we appreciate this. So let's show you guys how to get this installed on this four x four Silverado. Make sure if you do order it, you specify your cab size and your bed length. Um, and of course, if you're two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, um, and this should work on a variety of GM uh, applications, not just the Silverado, obviously Sierra, it may also work on some of the other vehicles as well. But let's get into it. First step is to remove the drive shaft, and we don't have anything removed from this vehicle. You have complete access, which is the beauty of working on a truck. It's held in by four 11 millimeters right here. Um, I've already broken these free off camera, but you can break these free just by holding the drive shaft. But if for some reason these are really frozen, you can jam a tool up in here to hold against you. And again, these are 11 millimeters and we're gonna break these free. Now, once you have all of these loosened, make sure you are supporting the drive shaft because it could slip out of this coupler right here and you don't want that to happen and land on your head. But luckily the stock one is very light. Um, now these are secure with Loctite. So the first time you're breaking these free, might give you a little bit of a fight. And we did get new bolts as well as new caps, retainer caps here, just to be safe since this is rotating at pretty high speed. You don't want this to go flying out on you. And to get better access, you can just rotate this guy right around from certain angles. You won't be able to get the bolts out. So you will have to rotate it. We do have the truck in neutral. And if you are working this on the ground, you'll make sure your wheels are chucked properly. And as you can see, I already had these started because we already had the drive shaft out prepping for this video. And then because we wanna have a nice complete video for you guys, we put it back in. 
Now we've already broken this drive shaft free, as I said, it was already removed, but the first time we did it, you, we did need a pry bar in here. So just getting it in between and prying out will help you break that free. And this is very light, but you still don't want it to drop on your head. So just be careful, make sure you're supporting it. All right, now you're gonna to wanna to push it into your transfer case since we are a four by four application here. And then we're just gonna pull straight out towards the rear of the vehicle. All righty. And that is your stock drive shaft removed. Easy peasy. Now let's get the two piece up. After removing your drive shaft, it's time to measure two, three, four, five times before cutting or drilling or both in this case. Um, so you wanna get a lot of measurements to make sure that your bracket is going in the correct spot. Now I will caveat this with saying, make sure you reach out to Performance Driveline to have them verify that you're measuring the, to the correct location for your specific vehicle, it will vary a little depending on your bed length as well as your cab size and obviously if you're four x four or two wheel drive. Now, if you are two wheel drive, what the instructions indicate is that you're either gonna go five or seven, which are these two marks here, inches back from this front brace. However, with our four wheel drive setup, we are gonna be going 10 inches back from this front brace. We did call them to verify that. Um, so as you can see, we take our tape measure and put it right across that brace and we have 10 inches right there to that mark. Now that you have your center mark, you know exactly where the center point of your um, new cross brace is going to go. So you're going to want to mark center on one of your support brackets and then line that center point up with that 10 inch mark. Um, now you don't want to have this hanging down below the frame where it could get hit and possibly ripped off. That would not be a good day. So you're gonna to wanna to keep it above. This is a little bit arbitrary, but they do say you wanna go as low as possible, which will help improve the angle of the drive shaft going into the rear diff. Um, so what we did is we marked our center here, we lined that up, and then we picked how low we wanted to go. That's how far we're gonna go down. So there's a, a little bit of a gap still here between the bottom of your frame and the bottom of your bracket. Um, and we marked the center of this hole right here. So after marking that, we took this back down and then we measured that distance. Now there is a weld down here, so make sure you have something nice and flat that you're measuring to. Um, and then we measured the height of that center, which in this case is one inch um, and five eighths. It may vary for you. And then we went over here and measured that same height, one inch and five eighths. And by doing this, we ensured that this um, bracket is level with the frame. Now, if you're trying to actually put a level across your cross brace, keep in mind your truck may not be perfectly level, so you may not be leveling your cross brace for your new drive shaft to the actual level. Instead, you're leveling it to an uneven truck. So it's much better, better to actually get measurements here to make sure that your brackets are both level. If we switch over to the passenger side, on this side, it's a little bit more complicated because we have an exhaust hanger right here. So we had to cut that hanger back. Now the hanger is still usable. It's still welded on pretty far up there and the exhaust obviously is not that heavy. Um, so you still have an exhaust hanger. Uh, so after you cut that flush and up high enough, you're gonna wanna do the same thing on this side. And you can see we used a C-clamp to help us mock this up. We did do the same thing over on the driver's side as well, but we took it back down so we could show you guys the measurements. But same process, 10 inches back from your frame, um, mark your first hole and then measure the height of the second one to make sure that it matches the height of the first one and you're good to start drilling. Now you will need to drill all the way through because this is a box frame, unlike some of the older Silverados that had more of a C-channel frame. Um, so we're gonna get these drilled out and then continue with the install. So we pulled off the bracket that was held up here by the C-clamp and as you can see, we got these two holes drilled. We also did the two holes on the other side. We're gonna show you guys the bits that we had to use and then we do need to finish one of these holes up on the outside of this um, frame right here. Um, it is important to note that after we cut the bracket for the exhaust, the exhaust hanger, we did go ahead and make sure that we smoothed this out so that the bracket would sit flush on here. Otherwise you do have some rough ridges from where the welds were. Um, but let's finish drilling out this hole and go through the bits that we used. First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your bit doesn't wander by punching the center of the hole precisely. So we have this punch with a nice sharp tip that we went onto all four holes with and center punched. And then we have our three starting bits. The exact size of these obviously don't matter. The main thing is that you're stepping up in sequence and you wanna end with a 3 8 bit, which is the size of the bolts. Um, 
it's also possible some of these kits may come with different size bolts so make sure that whatever final bit you're using is the same diameter or just very slightly bigger than the bolts that you have you don't want the holes way oversized so that fitment becomes sloppy now because of how thick the frame is our small bits would not go all the way through so we did need to mark holes on both sides which can be a challenge to make sure that you have those in the exact same spot um, obviously if it's slightly off in this application since so it's just a bolt and a nut it will be okay but you wanted to have it as close as possible so what we did is we found a l bracket that we had at the shop this one has a whole a hollow part right here but you wouldn't need to have a hollow part um, and we held it up right here and we put with the paint marker marks on both sides and then mark the height of the hole now again if this wasn't hollow you could simply offset it and then do the same thing mark the bottom and then mark the height of the hole um, and then we flip this around to the other side lining up those two marks on the bottom centering it there and then mark the height of the hole on that side so we could drill from the outside in so as you can see we just have this hole center punched right here so we're going to start that with our small bits and we are using a little bit of cutting oil to make sure that we get through it smoothly make sure you're wearing eye protection as well when you do So we already have one of our brackets installed, but there were four of these long bolts. The long bolts are gonna go through our box frame. Um, these medium sized bolts are gonna connect the supports to the cross brace. And then these really small ones are going to connect the center carrier uh, bearing from the uh, drive shaft to that cross brace. And then of course, we're gonna wanna add our washers and our lock washers as well. Now you can install the bolt in from the outside of the frame to the inside or vice versa. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt from the outside to the end so it looks a little bit cleaner. Now, if you wanna go ahead and hit your frame here with a little bit of paint, uh, you could. Um, same with the holes, however, in my experience, these truck frames tend to rust. Regardless, you can see all the rust forming everywhere else here, so it's not critical that you do that. Um, we do have a whole series showing how to undercoat your truck with a POR 15. So if you want to check that out, you can at the link above. All right, now I am going to go ahead and use a little bit of blue Loctite on here. Um, there are lock washers that are going on, but you definitely don't want your drive shaft falling out. Don't use red. At least I don't recommend it because you'll never have it coming off. And we are going to leave this a little bit loose until we have everything lined up and then we're going to snug all the bolts in. And take the cross brace. Now there is an arrow on this, conveniently pointing towards the front of the vehicle. Get that mixed up. There we go. Now we have our medium-sized bolts. Have our blue Loctite added onto these as well. And you'll notice here we do have this rubber grommet off right now, so that we can maneuver that around while we're getting the nuts and bolts in. So we have everything mocked up. Again, we're keeping it loose until we are completely in. So now we're gonna get our drive shaft, or at least the first part of our drive shaft up. Um, make sure everything's lined up good, connect the back half, and then we'll start tightening up all of these components. This came pre-lubricated, um, but it's always a good idea to double check, make sure it is lubricated, but they have a nice healthy amount of grease on the splines um, so we're good to go on the install for this so we're going to start at the back here coming up go way over and up into that transfer case or if you are rear wheel drive into the transmission so I'm gonna get the two bolts started loosely on here. Metal sleeve that runs around this bushing is gonna be pulled in tighter. So one of the bolts is not gonna be sticking through super far. So you might have a little bit more work to get it started. I am gonna snug that one up a little bit with a wrench real quick, just to get a little bit more started. And then we're gonna put the second half of the drive shaft in, and then we can start tightening down all our components. These are both 14 millimeter. So we have our new hardware for the rear drive shaft U joint to differential, and we're gonna be getting this installed. But as you can see, these come pre-installed with Loctite. 
And per the official GM instructions, you are always supposed to clean off this Loctite when you get bolts like this. Um, they are coated like this at the factory, but you don't know how long it's been sitting on the part shelf. So actually when you open the official GM guides, they tell you to clean this off and apply fresh Loctite because this may have reached the end of its shelf life. I don't know how long that shelf life is, but we wanna clean that off. These bearings come taped, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you remove that. They will slide off, because they're held in place by the uh, bucket that they sit in on the diff. You'll notice on the front and rear parts of the drive shaft are two arrows facing one another. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that those arrows do indeed face one another when you go and install it. And just like the front one, you wanna make sure that this is fully greased. And the reason it's important to have these arrows facing one another is that this drive shaft should be balanced. And the instructions do say this is a hammerless installation. Doing so will avoid your warranty. A little bit of force. Now there is a rubber boot right here. Now actually this metal cap was loose. We were testing to figure out if the metal cap goes on top, but we need to get this all slipped over top of here. So it'll seal in your grease right there. I'm gonna do that in a second. After I get this situated at the back here, I'm gonna get my coupler started so this can't fall out. If you're trying to torque this and you can't quite hold it, you might need to get a pry bar in there, hold against you. All right, there we go. So I popped this silver cap back off because this I think is gonna comp provide too much uh, compression on here. So we're gonna slide the rubber on and then the silver cap on after. That's all I remember you doing. All right, there we got it popped on all the way. Now I'm gonna take the metal cap so we got this on. I did go ahead and lubricate this with some uh, silicone paste, but this did take a lot of force to get on there. So it wasn't easy. The rubber wasn't too bad for the rubber. I did a twisting motion, um, but the metal cap was a good bit harder. There's also a Zerk fitting right here so you can reapply grease into these splines over time. <clears throat> but what I'm gonna do next is go ahead and tighten up all of the bolts, except for the two on this center one. We're gonna leave those for last, but we're gonna tighten our cross brace, and then tighten our two sides to the frame. Now, if you did leave these loose like we did, the um, drive shaft is gonna be pulling this down. So I went ahead and leveled this out with a transmission jack, and now we're gonna tighten it up. But make sure that these brackets are sitting level when you tighten them. Don't forget to reinstall your exhaust hanger. A little silicone paste will help that slide back on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the last two bolts. And one thing to consider here, you do have some adjustment, obviously, um, as there's a large slit here to move this forward or backwards. Um, but we're seated in plenty far up there and we are completely past the splines on this one. And you do have to keep in mind, once the truck is back down on the ground and there's weight on the wheels, this is gonna push in here a little bit. This is at its most extended state. So the two drive shafts should join together a little bit more once this is down on the ground. All right, now we're gonna go back and torque all these bolts down to spec. If you throw a laser line down there, if you have one of those, that'll be a good way to tell if you are straight all the way front to back. Um, but once you have that done, if you do need to adjust it, you can loosen these four bolts right here um, and slide this left or right a little bit. And that's really it guys, that's all there is to installing your two piece drive shaft. One thing I will note is uh, it would be nice if they added external plates that would go on the outside of the frame so that the weight or the force rather of those bolts and nuts going through was distributed a little bit better. But other than that, this seems like a pretty solid kit. Everything's really heavy duty and feels well built. And we'll see how this holds up over time. Um, as I mentioned, they do have that uh, Zert fitting right there. So you may wanna top this off every once in a while with some grease. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see how this works. I've been wanting to install one of these for a long time, so we got the opportunity on this customer's vehicle and we figured we would film it for you. If you have any comments or questions, please let us know. As always, parts are down in the description and when you go through our links, it really does help us out. And we'll see you back in the next video.